Johannes Sunka. Hello, my name is Aleix Ruiz Falquez and I'm the head of the Department of Pali and Languages of the Shan State Buddhist University. And in this short video, I would like to introduce uh, forthcoming prospective students to the life of students at SSBU, to our philosophy of teaching and to our methodology. I will first uh, discuss a little bit what is the philosophy of SSBU as a university in general. And then I will talk specifically about the program that we offer at the, at the Department of Pali and Languages called the uh, Master of Arts in Buddhist Studies, a Philological Pathway. So generally, the philosophy of Shan State Buddhist University is more or less based on the, the ideal of the great universities in Britain, such as Oxford and Cambridge. It consists very much in uh, reading and writing essays. So students usually uh, are requested to be familiar with the uh, literature on, on each particular topic that they deal with. It is not enough to simply uh, write your own ideas, but what we will usually ask you is to do proper research first. We insist on reading whatever has been written on a particular topic, which is something that sometimes is, is overlooked, especially in in, Asia, in some Asian universities, or at least in, in Myanmar. So we insist on that, trying to read uh, closely whatever has been done by other scholars. And then we, we by, by knowing what has been said, by learning what has been said and what has been done by others, then we know what remains to be done, or perhaps there is some critical remark to be done, always trying to be constructive. And I would say that uh, reading and writing uh, close reading or slow reading and slow writing are the key elements of the SSBU philosophy. Of course, many of you already know that this is a, a monastic university. It runs uh, half as a university, half as a monastery. So we try to follow more or less the routine of a Buddhist monastery. Our, our students' life also includes the chanting in the evening and so on. So if you, if you are interested in learning more about Buddhism from an academic point of view, but also from an experience point of view. I think SSVU is a good option that you, you should consider. As I say, we insist on the academic aspects very much. This is a university after all. So for instance, when we are writing essays, we, we, we try to teach our students how to do proper referencing, how to avoid plagiarism at all costs, etc. And we also aiming at original research in the final year of the MA program and especially at the MPhil and PhD programs. So now uh, let me move to the specifically to what we call the philological pathway, which is a variant or a, um, uh, one of the options for the MA program, the Master of Arts in Buddhist Studies. And we have two, two main programs. One is uh, what we call the Applied Pathway, which includes a large gamut of, of subjects from philosophy to anthropology, ethics, material culture, etc. And then we have this other uh, option for MA studies, which is called, uh, we call the philological pathway. As the name indicates, it's centered and it focuses on philological aspects. So what does philology mean here? It basically means reading the text very closely, trying to study the text in detail. And that means, first of all, mastering the, the classical languages, which in this case, include not only Pali, but of course Pali. Pali is the backbone of our department and it's the backbone of this uh, program of the philological pathway, learning Pali. Not only canonical Pali, not only the Pali of the Tipitaka, but we also uh, have uh, courses on commentarial Pali or scholastic Pali, the commentaries of Buddha Gosa, the Mapala and so on. And not only that, we also uh, offer courses on traditional grammar and traditional philology, which in include the study of grammars such as the Kachayana grammar and its commentaries like the Nyasa and so on. Uh, and apart from Pali, we, we also teach Sanskrit, which is a classical language of India and also of many Buddhist schools. It is also a very useful tool when we are reading Pali. And apart from Pali and Sanskrit, we also teach some Prakrit. Prakrit is actually a uh, kind of umbrella term that includes many things. 
here we try to focus on what uh, are usually known as the, the Buddhist Prakrits. For instance, we read some Gandhari, we try to read texts that are in, in some dialects of the so-called Middle Indic, in different dialects uh, of Middle Indic in which Buddhist texts have been written. And that includes, of course, for instance, reading the, the Ashokan inscriptions, the uh, inscriptions of Emperor Ashoka. So we, we try to, to study, uh, first of all, the grammar of all these languages, principally, mainly Pali, but also Sanskrit and Prakrit. Then we also focus on something called textual criticism. That means the, the knowledge of how to establish good editions, or at least how to assess the editions of the text that we have. As you all know, when we, when we try to read a book in the original language, in this case in Pali, this book is the, is the work of a particular person or a group of persons. And this is the result of centuries of tradition. Tradition here meaning the handing down of the text. As you know, initially the texts were probably handed down and transmitted orally, but from the first century uh, before the common era, it is said that they were written. And since the first moment when they were written, then they were copied and recopied up to the point that uh, we have man the, the manuscripts that we are using now to, to recover these texts or, or to, to edit these texts, they maybe uh, they are 200 or 300 years old, sometimes a little bit older, but not so old. So basically we have texts that are uh, two, 300 years old, but they represent the original teachings of the Buddha, or at least the original texts of the Theravada Buddhist tradition, and the, the paper editions, the printed editions that we are using, or online editions, are ultimately based on these manuscripts. So any reader who has uh, read different versions of the Tipitaka will have noticed that there are, here and there, there are variants. And what textual criticism tries to do is to ideally try to establish which variant is more convincing and which text reads better. There is no point in uh, studying textual criticism if one has no understanding of the literature in general, also the meaning. So one needs to, of course, study the philosophy or the, the ideas that are presented in the Tipitaka. One cannot simply study the language without the ideas. And the, uh, knowing the grammar is also very important. So we, we study textual criticism, keeping in mind all the, of course, the grammar and the cultural background, the ideas that are presented in the Tipitaka. Then in connection to that, we also offer some courses that focus, uh, in, in this case, not on the Pali text, not on establishing the Pali text, but on translation. So as you know, there are, there's no one single method to translate one text and simply to, to make students aware that there are different possibilities when we are translating and that there has been a lot of scholarship on this subject and that there are different approaches uh, so we also offer courses that uh, mostly are based on translating Pali texts in, in this case into English, which is the medium language, but we also encourage students to translate into their, their mother tongues, which can be, for instance, uh, Myanmar language or Burmese or Shan, or even some other international students that may come from other countries. Like, I don't know, if someone comes from Russia, then I think this, the same theories or the same, the same uh, uh, theoretical background can be can be used for translating Pali into any language. So uh, one thing is textual criticism, and then translation is also something we we uh, teach. And then mostly we, when it comes to our methodology, the way the way we structure the courses. Um, one point that is very important is that SSVU is at least our philosophy is not exam oriented. So our goal as lecturers. Uh, is not that students will be able to pass a, a certain test or that they will study very hard and memorize lots of things that they don't know by themselves. They just read in a book, memorize them, and then uh, pour it on an exam and, uh, and write whatever they have memorized and probably then forget it the next day or the next year. That's not our, that's not our philosophy. What we try to do is to keep a constant pace, uh, read a lot, read together, and very importantly, read very slowly. Uh, when we read, go, go slow, look into the, pay attention to the detail, compare different editions, 
consider different possibilities in the translation, uh, allow everyone to join in the discussion. Therefore, our, our classrooms are a little bit like workshops or that, that's, I'm talking about the philological pathway. What we are trying to do is reading sessions or reading workshops. So what we call a course is nothing but a reading workshop, a real workshop where we meet uh, with uh, preferably small numbers. We try to have a very low uh, ratio, maybe uh, five students or four students per one teacher or per two teachers. Then maybe in a small group, we will meet uh, very frequently, a few times a week and read one text together. And this is the way in which the grammar sinks in and also all the theories that we might be teaching in other courses can be applied. And that leads me to the final point, which is what, what do we offer beyond, beyond the MA program, the MA program, the philological pathway. For those students who are interested in, in MPhil and PhD, our goal, like in any other university, is to, to help them to do original research. And in our case, this original research has to do with mostly with text, so any, any research project that would involve uh, the study of Pali or Sanskrit or Prakrit grammar and texts, uh, especially aspects of textual criticism. For instance, there are many texts that uh, have never been edited. They are only in manuscript form. Uh, some other texts have been edited, but uh, we still have more manuscripts that have not been uh, consulted. So there are many projects in our university that are, are focusing on, on critical editions. For instance, uh, one project by one PhD student, at the moment he's an MPhil student, uh, consists in the critical edition and translation of a, a Pali text, a cosmological Pali treatise called the Lokupati, composed in the, in the Pagan period in Myanmar. Another student is working on, again in a critical edition and translation of a text from the 15th century in Myanmar composed by uh, Aryavamsa, which is the Jataka Visodhana, which is a text that combines Pali and Burmese language and, and so on. So we have such projects. Uh, we have also another project on Pali lexicography. That means uh, traditional dictionaries and, and the study of words like in the Abhidhana Padipika. Uh, and then, of course, if there are translation projects, they are also most welcome. It also has to do with text and philology to a certain extent. There are many texts in Pali that have never been translated into English. There are many other texts that have been translated, but the translations are already a bit dated, a bit old. So there are many, many ways in which uh, students can pursue original research at SSBU, touching on materials that have never been touched, uh, sp especially from, from the area. Uh, I myself, I'm, I'm working and trying to collaborate on different projects that have to do with the, the study of Pali grammar. That means the traditional study of, of Pali grammar or Vyakarana or Sadda or Niruti. It has many names and we are interested in any project that has to do with the study of Pali language and Pali literature. So if you are interested in, in all these aspects, I would highly recommend you to consider applying to SSVU. And, and hope to meet you soon in the future. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.